Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Rise TV. We are live and coming at you on a beautiful Sunday morning in October, almost November. Very close. I hope everybody's doing great out there, having some fun Halloween events. I just came off of one last night, a little tired out, but we'll make it through. Um, Victoria is going to not be with us today, but me and Jaren are going to carry this show. And we have an excellent guest with you today, Leslie Thornton, who is a TEDx talker and uh, does amazing hypnosis and uh, NLP work. So we're going to be talking to her just momentarily. We are Rise TV, a limitless mindset culture company. We are here to build leaders, people who see brothers and sisters, people who rise each other up, people who own their shit and people who are here to unlock those sacred gifts that are from within. I am Greg Schumacher, your transformational leadership visionary coach and uh, also your MC for the day. We also have the traveling motivational speaker, teacher of manifestation, cosmic human design coach. That would be the one and only light em up Mr. Kenyon, Jaron Kenyon. How are you, Jaron? Oh, I'm great. Hello, everyone out there. First of all, love seeing Andrew, past guest in our intro there. Words of advice, brilliant, brilliant young man. Then I love Leslie's intro. Man, that's great stuff. We do that, we've done that often during School of Ohm. We want you to go to sometimes the idea that, hey, right now I've got everything. There are no limitations. I've got all the resources. I've got all the health. I've got all the ability. I have infinite possibility. What am I gonna choose? What do I wanna do? What would I be giving? and being in that place and staying there for a period of time for a long period of time the more better <laughs> but mm -hmm. that is the power and that is the magic that is the magic that causes things to happen when you're not coming from limitation but you're coming from your infinite eternal multi-dimensional spirit and so we love that energy to start the show and more importantly a big happy birthday to our brother <sighs> greg schumacher here who his birthday was yesterday uh, he turned 21, so he's <laughs> yeah. he's now a man. So Greg is now 21 with us and uh, celebrating his born day. Happy birthday, Greg. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, 21, um, to have the wisdom <laughs> of 46 and then be 21, that would be the, the ideal situation. That's what would be the, the real fun, right, is to have take the wisdom of your older self and put it into your younger self. But I'm enjoying 46. I... Uh, I'm very happy with where I'm at and, uh, and just uh, enjoying the ride, the, the ups and downs of life and the, uh, you know, getting into the flow state when you can and then dealing with the storms when you, when you, when you have to. And uh, that's all part of life and, and just learning, right, and, and growing and uh, learning from wonderful people around the world uh, such as Leslie here. Uh, so let's talk about Leslie Thornton, the founder and CEO of, of Hypnotist for Permanent Weight Loss, an international health coaching program for people seeking mental freedom and is a leading expert in holistic health space. So we're going to have an excellent conversation with her. Let's bring in Leslie right now. All right. Welcome to the show, Leslie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We really happy to have you here and have an amazing conversation with you and hopefully uh, open some amazing uh, cans of worms and uh, see where we go here. So uh, the first thing I just wanted to talk to you about, um, because when I went through therapy, when I was in my 20s, I was going through some tough times. And uh, in therapy, we talked a lot about triggers, right? And how to deal with your triggers, um, the things that come up. And I know you deal a lot with uh, weight loss. Um, you know, food is a huge addiction out there. Um, and the problem is everywhere you go, it's there. So it's not like you can avoid it like uh, alcoholics, for example, or, or, or cigarettes or something where you just don't have them around you. Food is everywhere. So that's probably one of the harder addictions to break. Uh, talk to us a little bit about triggers and, uh, and addiction. Yeah, I love that you're asking me and starting off with this question. I'm so passionate about the whole entire thing, but I think where I want to start is to talk about how what I feel like most people are missing when it comes to actually experiencing relief from whatever, you know, whatever, whether it's addiction, you know, food addiction, or just anything that triggers us, or like you were saying, going through the storms of life mm. is when we're not, people think that they're actually 
feeling their feelings and they're touching on the source of where it's coming from. But in my experience, it's like they're not actually in it enough. And in neuro-linguistic programming, we talk about um, the neural networks and all of the stuff that we're, um, the work that we're doing is the more that we can get right inside the actual trigger, like allow ourselves to experience the fullness of the, the pain, the discomfort, the tension, the gripping, whatever, and like allow it to do what it's going to do, you know? So maybe emo- like tears are going to come out or anger is going to get expressed or, you know, whatever emotion is there or, you know, memory pops in that has you kind of be able to repair it, right? If you're working with someone who's able to do that, like that's actually where tr- real transformation occurs. Um, and it can be faster and easier than a lot of people think. But here's what happens when we don't actually do that is the mind will start to go and go and go. We'll start to analyze. We'll start saying things to ourselves. I love the intro of the guy saying, you know, the suicidal thinking, you know, but those dark thoughts can start. And then you start questioning yourself, what's wrong with me? And why can't I figure this out? And, you know, all of these things will just cycle and cycle and cycle. And then, but I should be able to figure this out by myself. And none of it right? It's like all of it is just dancing around what's possible when we actually go inside the trigger and allow it to come out in whatever way. And wanting to recognize and acknowledge the um, challenges or the, um, it can feel too hard to face those, to actually go in it. You know, I know for myself, I needed someone to literally hold my hand and be like, like, because I was scared to cry. I was scared to feel my feelings, like what makes us amazing leaders right? Is because at some point in life, we learned how to turn it off, (laughs) you know, and but like, they're still there. So if we actually make it a regular practice to go in there and like, allow and feel as like intentionally, um, but no guilt and shame, if you know, we don't feel like we're good at it. Uh, When I was living in Thailand, I actually did like a 30 day intention for myself in my meditation that I want to cry once per day. Wow. Because it was so foreign to me. So I was like, I'm just going to feel into my body until I find something sad enough that I can actually have tears come out of my, so just normalize, you know, emotionality and the fact that it's always existing and can be the biggest gateway into manifestation, mm. right? Into like actually getting clear on what we actually want and stepping into our potential and being limitless. So. Yeah, yeah, I love those words you just used there. Uh, so uh, I, I used Andrew in the beginning on purpose. Uh, he's a he's a former guest, uh, probably multiple times, like probably five times maybe. Uh, but he is also a hypnotist and uh, NLP and a little bit of a ma- magician as well. But um, he's a really cool dude, and and I, I put him in there on purpose because he talks about a lot of the same stuff, and um, he's very well versed in 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 the way the mind works and the way we do things. Um, when we talk about triggers, uh, humans are very complicated creatures. They're onions, right? They're layers and layers and layers of stuff. And we don't really know the source a lot of times, the root cause of, of things. Um, why do you think triggers are there? Um, do you think that we have to face those things in our life at some point? I mean, obviously, you can go to death and you never face them, but... In order to transcend, in order to move forward, we have to get through those. There's something from a childhood trauma, something that's there that's causing that. Um, and why do you think they're there? Is it an evolution thing? Is it a transcendent thing? Is it a higher self thing? What's going on there? My thought on this is that if you get to experience where your triggers are coming from and get to like you get the opportunity to learn how to move past them and learn from them. Like you're very lucky. (laughs) Um, And, you know, it's kind of, you know, the question of how come some people wake up to consciousness and some people don't, it's Mm -hmm. like, but I think we get lucky if we do. (laughs) And at the same time, it can feel unlucky because it can feel painful, but that's where like our addictions and our challenges, like, if we choose to pay attention to them and, you know, I, and believe that there is some other forces out there that are guiding us to get to where, you know, our soul's path is meant to go while we're here. I mean, 
for me, it really has been a path of when the student is ready, the teacher appears, but yeah. there also has been the amount of me saying yes. Right. And like investing and in coaching and, you know, looking up YouTube videos and trying to find a way out that wasn't a quick fix. Um, and some people, and who's to say that like, so say someone has anxiety and they just go on anxiety medication, like maybe that's their path, you know, yeah. but like I was against anxiety medication and like just medication in general for whatever reason. And like, so I started looking into resources that could help me alleviate it on my own. Yeah. Right. And then it led me to under seeing all this stuff. And I, and now I believe, I believe that my Dharma is to be a spiritual transformational leader in the world. And and so I follow it, right? Because it feels right to me. And I, you know, all the spiritual teachers that we study will say, you know, just follow your path of highest passion, right? And you can never go wrong. So, you know, I think we can all trust that as far as where they come from. So the blueprint of our unconscious mind is laid out in the first zero to 10 years of life about some people say seven, some people say whatever. Um, so, you know, everything that happens during that time, if you had you know, in my world, you know, weight conscious parents, right. That were like, Oh, you're getting a little chubby or grandparents, or, you know, they were dieting all the time. Then it's just going to be imprinted in your unconscious mind that being fat is bad. And, you know, looking good is matters and you're going to be rejected if not. And so you start, you know, creating ways of being to make sure that you're going to survive. Um, so, but what neuroplasticity has proven is that we can actually go in and revise some of those things. Um, but all of our major beliefs, our habits, our patterns, you know, 95% of the results that we're actually getting in life is based on what's going on in the unconscious mind. Um, so how awesome is it that we can actually uh, rewrite the script and do something different? Yeah. Awesome stuff there. And Joe Dispenza is showing us a lot of that kind of stuff as well. Jaron, your thoughts in perspective. Well, I'm loving your light, Leslie. I mean, the, the energy and the frequency of also your language is beautiful. Sometimes I'm like, what I, that's words I would have used. Am I, am I talking or is Leslie talking? But you do it in such an amazing way. So you can tell, I just want to say, I'm not building an ego, just telling the truth. Um, I'm loving some of this topic and this, and this expression we have. Um, I just want to say, you know, back to the first part too, right? Like it's, you kind of touched on it, Leslie. It's like, we want to get the energy out. We want to express ourselves. We want to feel through it. You want to reach the core of the onion. You know, I, I'm reminded of a quote Greg, uh, has said, we have to walk through the uncomfortable truth to get to the core of our success channels. We want to get to that place of uncomfortable truth and we want to feel it out. Why? To get to a point where we can become objective and neutral, honestly, because then we can have a spirit view lens of what we're going to do next with this information, with this wisdom you've now gained, with this contrast you've now experienced in reality. It supports you now in moving forward and, and being able to, in a sense, quantum jump into what it is you want to experience or be or create next regarding around that subject or regarding around that that topic so oftentimes we don't feel the old out enough we don't feel the energy through we reach like 80 percent of it but we don't absolutely hit the core we don't hit the real villain instead of getting to that villain and then and, and then after we express ourselves and we feel it through and there's all kinds of natural ways or exercises we can do right to cause ourselves through our spiritual will to arrive to that place feel it through, but then like become objective. I'm really, I'm really huge on, you know, the, the, the awakening uh, consciousness and the, the eternal spirits that we are, that are rising up, looking at things more objectively instead of subjectively, because when you're viewing it subjectively is when you're stuck in that marsh and you're not going to get past it until you yourself transcend it. You yourself move through it. But when you can see things objectively, it's like you're on top of a mountain and you're looking over the horizon and you can see things clearly now. You can feel things clearly now. You're in a place of acceptance, right? You've accepted everything fully, but that doesn't mean you're subject to um, anything else in the future. That means now that I'm in an acceptance and I can see it clearly, I have a choice now, a clear choice, a pure choice of what I'm going to place my energy and my and my thoughts on next 
who and what I'm going to be around next and how I'm going to be and behave as I'm going forward from a fresh lens, you're liberated to an extent. Let's call it that little piece of the onion, you know, that little area or that little imprint that now you've dissolved and you're re-imprinting yourself and the cosmos with a new lens. So when you let it out, the anger, the sadness, the stuff, all this stuff, when you get it out, if you don't, see it and then decide what you're going to go towards next it'll come back in even if you let it all out as you said the subconscious mind will bring it right back in and you will still even if you're not bringing it in the patterns of karmic imprint will cre- will recreate it until that you have it come back and you say no to it or you choose to respond versus react in a higher way so you got kind of like a couple levels here to go through you got the inside And then you got the extra tests outside. How am I going to be as I behave, as I go forward with this? And all this cannot be done if you don't reach the core of the onion and accept life for what it is and honestly move to a place of appreciation of everything you've ever went through. If I could add just a little bit on that, is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I love everything that you're saying and from like a human perspective, perspective um like or like that's just yeah the way that i look at just to give your audience like some tangible things of like how to actually navigate through this and like make sense of triggers and make sense of right everything that we're talking about is like what if we can trust our desires first right so whatever that is so say it's like i want to have a healthy relationship with food i want to learn have a have a healthy relationship or get married or i want to you know make a million dollars like whatever it is it's like what if we could just start there and actually own the fact that that desire exists and then do whatever we need to do right to get ourselves the support to actually reach this human you know goal right that's just very you know it is what it is Right. But then what makes the so there's there's naturally going to be challenges along the way as we're going towards that humanly desire. And what if at the same time as we're enduring those challenges and maybe coming up with some of those triggers and doing the inner work to actually become aware of, you know, things we weren't aware of in our unconscious that was preventing us from getting to this goal or whatever, we could still simultaneously hang on to the greater vision that we really you know, we, like I said, like my Dharma being the spiritual transfer, it's like, it's this by my owning this and walking the path to get to this human desire, I am becoming who I need to become to live out that Dharma. Yeah. So this is what makes the challenges and the day-to-day stresses and struggles tolerable to me. And simultaneously with my awareness about the fact that these thoughts that can come up that say, I want to give up, this is too hard, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It makes it okay because I know that they're not real. And I know that that's what comes up when emotions get stuck in my body. So then again, I go in and I'll use the NLP stuff and get the emotions released, right? I can get present again and say, oh, that's right. I remember this is what I'm doing. This is who I am, right? And then and we stay consistent, we stay motivated, and then we actually achieve that goal, which is also in alignment with, whatever we have come here to do on a more spiritual plane. Yeah. Good stuff there. Really, really deep stuff. And, uh, you know, I guess when we look at the human experience, um, it's full of its challenges. And I think that we have a lot of expectations on ourselves, a lot of expectations, you know, whether it's putting that, uh, that goal of a million dollars or, you know, that perfect love relationship or the, uh, you know, the, the business that explodes, you know, that you, that you've always wanted to do. Uh, we put a lot of expectations on ourselves and a lot of pressure. Um, and I think in that we, we bring up a lot of triggers. We bring a lot of past stuff up because I think we're, when in pressure, we tend to bring up old things that have happened in our lives, right? Because we're going through tough, tough courses, tough, tough roads. And we start to bring up things that have happened to us in our lifetime that we haven't worked through. And then when we get to those loops, we start to get into the subconscious. We start to have our programs and we start to make mistakes over and over. We are just human beings. We have, we have a lot of mistakes to make. Uh, and then we don't accept ourselves for those mistakes. We get very mad at ourselves or, 
or people that are around us, family, friends, whatever, they tell us that we're doing wrong, that we're, you know, we're going down the wrong path, you know, and we're, get, we're getting doubt in that sense too. So we're not only trying to not doubt ourselves, we're getting doubted from the external and then we're hitting our triggers, our loop patterns, our things from our past are coming up, bubbling to the surface. We got a lot going on in these <laughs> little bodies and brains uh, to, to navigate compared to go out in nature and you watch just animals naturally in their environment. They don't got a lot going on up here. They got just instinctive stuff. So just being a human being alone, just navigating this place, this earth, um, and this lifetime is a lot of going on and, uh, the human experience is very complicated and that's why it's so good to have coaches that are out there that have gone through these things that have walked through them and they're not perfect. Coaches and gurus are not perfect. They are just, uh, people too, but they have walked through those uncomfortable things, found some wisdom on the other side and have transcended some issues in their lives to help assist others in those visions. Is that how you see yourself, Leslie? Yeah. I mean, coaches. Yes. If you find the right one, do it. Like I just say, find someone who has the belief system and has achieved what it is that you want to achieve and just invest in whatever they have because you need their same beliefs and whatever they did to get it, you'll get there so much faster. Yeah. What's so fascinating about the beginning of what you were just saying, like I've been doing this for 10 years. And so a client will come and they're working towards their goal and say they step on the scale and they see a number that they don't want to see. And now they're having an emotional experience, right? So then we'll do NLP and go inside of, you know, the actual pain of that. And every single time, and like when I was a brand new coach, it was like, oh God, like what if this doesn't actually bring up? No, every single time it's never not happened that when they actually stay with that feeling of the trigger and they're being with it, and then they come up with what age is it? The TEDx talk that I just did was how to master your emotions in 90 seconds. It's not live yet, but it, I walk people through a little exercise in doing it. And then I say, you know, if you were to know what age is this sensation and they'll come up with, you know, the number, the first thing that comes in. And then it's like, okay, being with that age and being with that same sensation in your life, first memory or thought that pops up. And it'll literally be every single time, like something that directly correlates with the experience that they're having in real time from zero to 10 years of age. So for example, you know, maybe it was like, you know, I was somebody, you know, didn't want me to play with them on the playground, you know, when I was six and right. And then that energy gets stored in the body because they never had the ability to express it. Right. So then again, we do NLP to like have that conversation to like close up that energy. Um, there was a story of this woman. She had a basketball sized tumor in her abdomen and she was like the healthiest woman. Right. She did yoga. She lived in Hawaii. She, you know, juice cleanses and like she did it all. Right. And she ends up with this basketball sized tumor in her abdomen. And uh, she had some internal bleeding going on. And the doctor's like, we need to immediately, you know, do surgery. And she was like, how long will you give me? to not do that. And she's like, well, you're bleeding. So I'll give you 24 hours. Well, she took some supplements or something, the bleeding stopped. And then she said to the doctor, how long will you give me now to not have to do this surgery? And the doctor was not happy, but she was like a month. Right. So this woman, you know, did everything she could think of. She ended up going to her massage therapist, her massage therapist guided her in a visualization inside the tumor and similar came up with this memory from the past. It doesn't have to be this major thing. Just, it was like some disagreement with her parents as a kid. She does this conversation back and forth and just her imagination. And from that day forward, her tumor shrank to the site, to the point where they couldn't even find it on a CT scan. Right. So like the body does not forget these little tiny things that could happen that closes your energy off. And that's what leads to flow and it leads to health and it leads to so, um, again, we get to use every challenge that's coming up. It's like, it's for a purpose, but I can't imagine living a life where I didn't know that, uh, it would make it feel like life was happening to me. And why is everything so freaking hard all the time? Not that my brain doesn't say that sometimes, but there's always the part of me because I've done this work and do it that knows 
they're like, okay, there's some, it's always deeper. It's not actually what I think it is. And my job is just to support myself in navigating through and trust the process and see what's on the other side and feel grateful that I'm alive as it's happening. So. Yeah. It, 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 it's amazing what you can do with, um, you know, those type of meditations where you can go inside and you can really trigger to feel where it was. And I feel like the reason why it picks on us as kids is because we were, we didn't really have control yet. We couldn't pay for ourselves. We couldn't make our own decisions for the most part. Uh, we couldn't drive away if we didn't want something, you know, we, we had to be in the storm. And so we were kind of helpless in the storm. We were depending on other adults or people to protect us. And when we go through tough, difficult times where, you know, the friend wouldn't play with us, um, we don't know how to process that either at that age. Um, we think it's us, right? We think it's, oh, it was something with me. And then what we do is it, it plants a seed at six years old. And that seed festers, right? It, it grows throughout your life. And now you're 30 and you have this full tree in your, in your yard that you don't want. You know, it's toxic, but you are still fixated on that tree. And so, you know, we have to go inside to figure out where that was. We have to go down to the root of the tree and we have to kill it from the root up so that we can start to move forward, at least in that area of our life. It's so crazy how we dam up, you know, these areas and then we're unable to move forward and flow. Uh, Jaron, your final thoughts before we get to the intros. Oh, just a quick thought while we're all talking here. I'm just contemplating. You mentioned Thailand, Leslie, and it's just reminding me of how much I enjoy my massages nearly every day <laughs> living out there. And I was imagining Boy, wouldn't that be great to be doing that every single day for about eight bucks? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Not <laughs> I would be 100 percent on that. I got massages <laughs> all the time when I was abroad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. But on a serious note, I love uh, Michelle's comment um, I wanted to respond to when she was mentioning uh, what is interesting about this is you may have a parent that suggests you shouldn't do this or that and you disregard. But then someone else, she says, a psychic mentions the same in different verbiage, tone, et cetera. And then you might. Right. And for me, when I read that, it's just making me say, you know, whatever the identity could you could fill in a lot of different identities from anybody that, you know, or you're, you know, semi attached to versus someone who's a, a neutral or fresh and you're not attached to and it's objective and you're automatically going to have more of a of a possibility to receive from someone that's fresh and new, which is why it's so important to get around fresh and new experiences and change your space. Cause when you change your space, you change your time. Literally you change your timeline by changing your space. Hence why travel is so good for you, but also um, getting around fresh and new perspectives because, you know, but that doesn't mean that the wisdom isn't there from the person that you have known for a while and that you love. I mean, so we want to see things neutrally. It's a challenge for humans to do that. I try to do that. Not always. Sometimes I'm lost in the in the patterns as well, right? But I try to say, okay, this person has an identity, but I'm going to strip that away. And for today, they're fresh and new. I'm going to truly listen to them from an objective standpoint and not get cast a, a, a sh an identity on how they're going to behave, what they're going to do, the way they are, because you're creating that. You're manifesting them to be that way just as much as they are that way. The other side to that is the person that's the student or the teacher or the wisdom here also needs to be that way because you'll immediately know, well, they may have great wisdom, but they want something for me. They think they know the way for me. There's an agenda behind it, whereas a more neutral person has no agenda, hence a coach. I meet someone new and there's no agenda at all. It's fresh and new. Even after a year of coaching someone, Naturally, there is some there. You have to work to not have it there, right? So I just point that out to say that the difference between fresh and new versus old, as well as the teacher, the student, any symbiotic, synergistic relationship, being able to be objective, being able to be present, and being able to look at life in new eyes so that you can feel and see whether you're the server or the one receiving from a true perspective as opposed to imprints of agenda or, you know, preconditioning from the past. Great stuff there, Jaron. All right, we're going to get to our intros and we're going to come back to some amazing conversation. 
And we're going to also find out what Leslie's up to and all she does. So let's find out. All right. Rise TV is a barrier-breaking variety show about business and self-development and human evolution. With long-form conversations hosted by visionaries, educators, and entertainers, Jaron Kenyon, Victoria Schumacher, and Greg Schumacher, with incredible world-class game changers of friends and guests that have included speakers, influencers, musicians, entrepreneurs, doctors, hypnotists, authors, artists, coaches, and beyond. Our goal is to assist humanity in discovering their true potential and power, which is only from within. Through books, courses, shows, seminars, schools, summits, retreats, private coaching, and more, Team Rise will take your vision to a new frontier of quantum thrusting forward, a new way of living and co-creating on Earth. Jaron Kenyon, he's a manifesting generator of the cosmic human design system. He's a traveling motivational speaker, teacher of manifestation, and believes cosmic human design is the internet of human beings. Jaron studied from and pilgrims to India with guru Dr. Palai. He then became a life mastery consultant through Mary Morsey and Bob Proctor's organization. He also holds strong wisdom in quantum physics and Nikola Tesla mathematics. Jaron as a coach will give you lifelong tools to keep you ascending in your life with ease. Work privately with Jaron at Jaron at JaronKenyon.com. On to you, Jaron. All right, Mr. Greg Schumacher, happy birthday or born day to you. <laughs> happy born day to Mr. One Three Splenic Projector. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> Greg is a projector in the cosmic human design system. We are not using tropical astrology, though, for our, our calculation of our human design. We are using true sidereal astrology as it is in the sky in the present day sky. The 13 signs, not 12. There are 13. They are all different sizes are the constellations. And the sky is always shifting. So we are in the modern day sky that since the year zero has rotated 31 degrees. You got to adjust 31 degrees in light of all those other things to calculate your true cosmic human design, which shows you your avatar self and its ascension and how you have interaction with the field, with other people in your ascension, in your manifestations and in your cosmic harmony, your interface, your interface with this experience we're having on the earth plane. Wouldn't it be great to have a manual for yourself and to start to practice being more of yourself and from higher frequencies? And that's what Cosmic Human Design brings you. Rise Media TV will illustrate that. Uh, RiseMediaTV.com, that is. You can take a look there. Get your free chart at CosmicHumanDesign.com. Adjust for UTC time. Must do that. And also our Rise Code book has some Cosmic Human Design in it for all you all to enjoy. Greg is a projector in that system, guide, architect, advisor, and many other things. He's also a visionary leader and transformational business coach, brings his clients directly to their inner truth and freedom of expression. He will help you masterfully release negativity, doubt, and fear to usher in you into a personal and business life of pur purpose, passion, and prosperity. I could say those three Ps. <laughs> He comes from a long lineage of inventors and innovators and continues the tradition with cutting edge ways of helping humanity. You can work with Greg as well as all his programs that he has available. I think he's going to show us one of them today. His few books that he's written aside, there they are. And hire him as your media wizard as well at risemediatv.com. And of course, Stay tuned for our segments. I will be leading us through a manifestation moment. And Greg will be giving us something different today, I think. So I can't even say what I normally yep. say, Greg. I caught I myself. <laughs> Changing it up a little bit. Get, keep everybody on their toes. All right, quickly, we're going to take a look here at the School of Ohm. This is on Wednesday nights. These are free events. Uh, they are live. Um, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come join us. Uh, people are having a great time with these. Um, we're doing chanting. We're doing visualization. We're doing uh, riding horses on a beach. We're doing uh, being in paradise, uh, in the water, holding hands together, doing all kinds of amazing things to really raise the vibrations up on the planet. And uh, it's really taken off. Next week, we have uh, Brittany Renee returning uh, to us as a guest and uh, we have maybe have a major announcement for you we'll see but uh, that she's always a great guest and then of course the rise code has come out me and jaron have co-authored that and uh 
There it is in my hand right now. So we are very happy, and we're going to talk a little bit about this at the end of the show um, for you guys. You already have the book in hand. We can even talk about it while you look through the pages. So uh, we're really excited to have released that and uh, an upcoming podcast uh, um, that we are going to be talking about it on. So very, very cool stuff. All right, let's talk about Leslie here. Leslie Thornton, the founder and CEO of Hypnotist for Permanent Weight Loss and International Health Coaching Program for People Seeking Mental Freedom. That sounds great. And is a leading expert in holistic health space. She has helped hundreds of people around the world overcome the obsession with food, body, body and weight, which is probably a pandemic in its own, uh, for good. She's fresh off her TEDx talk, and uh, we are very happy to have her on with us. Talk a little bit about what you do, Leslie, and, uh, and then we'll get into your TEDx stuff. Yeah, thanks for that. So, yep, hypnosis for permanent weight loss, so signature program you know, fast track to freedom, get you free from food, body and weight stuff in six weeks. Um, since the TEDx talk, I've been inspired because, you know, when people get into the program, they quickly realize that we're working on a lot more than just food, but a lot of NLP and the triggers mm -hmm. and the emotional mastery piece. Um, so this coming December 1st, I'm actually opening up a new program. That's just emotional mastery for leaders and entrepreneurs, um, and business owners. Um, so Yep. Information isn't even out on that, but if anyone wanted to message on Instagram or something, I'm happy to share information. Um, I also certify people in neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, um, hypnosis, and NLP coaching. Uh, my next certification is actually starting this Friday, and I am looking for one more person, so if anyone's feeling called. Um, but you get officially certified in hypnosis, NLP, NLP coaching, and timeline therapy, which is the best stuff in the world that geek out on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have this free ebook. So if anyone is struggling, uh, with food, body and weight stuff, um, you can grab that at hpwl.info forward slash ebook. Yeah. The link is below in the YouTube, so they can just click on it. Easy peasy. Uh, yeah. Um, so you're doing a lot of different things here and, uh, that's awesome. Um, because I think that this is where the world is headed, and I'm going to be actually talking about that in the transformational leadership uh, segment. But this is where the, the, the world is headed um, with technology now um, and the freedom of jobs now to be able to do things that are um, reaching people without a brick and mortar, right? And be able to be a coach and be a, a, a person that's authoring books and p person who's um, out there making uh, content with videos and courses. This is like the new way of really training people in, in, in uh, all kinds of different ways. So it's awesome that we can reach people this way. And um, it looks like you're doing a great job here. Uh, so everybody below, you can click also on uh, Leslie's Instagram page and follow her there. And uh, I believe they can get a hold of you through that. Is that correct, Leslie? Yep. If they just want to send me a message on Instagram, that's fine. Leslie M. Thornton. Yep. All right. Excellent stuff there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your TEDx experience. Um, so tell everybody, like, I, you know, from TED Talks was one of the biggest ones was Simon Sinek, who did the Why Talk. Um, there's been so many amazing um, people on stage that have these, like, what is it, 15 minutes to just talk, present an idea that to the world that's impactful. Um, so how did you get into the TEDx and, uh, and how was your experience? Yeah. Uh, so it was on my goal list for a little while, but I actually remember saying on one of our quarterly meetings to my team, I was like, this quarter TEDx talks happening. I don't know how it's going to happen, <laughs> but it's happening. Uh, and then much how manifestation works, uh, there ended up being an email. So I was a co-author of a book maybe four years ago, someone who just reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked me to contribute a chapter to one of these books. And uh, he emailed all the authors from that book and said, hey, you know, I've got this official TEDx coach who's willing to do a group coaching program for how to, you know, make the TEDx talk happen and land it. Um, and she's willing to do it at this group rate. And so immediately I signed on to that. And I think it was like 10, you know, group sessions. And this woman was fantastic. Um, my Lisa, uh, <laughs> shout her out. But um, yeah, so I just had like this world-class TEDx coach 
you know, coming on and she was just a stand for our success in that and taught us, you know, not only how to design the talk, but also things that you don't know about it, you know, and um, what they're looking for and what they're not looking for and, you know, how to apply and how you become successful and, and everything like that. So I just walked through the path and I'm also a projector. So uh, things, I don't get things by going after them. I kind of wait for the invitation. Uh, so it didn't feel right for me, you know, at the end of that course to keep pushing and looking and searching for the talk and wait, yeah. like trying to things don't work for me that way. So I was like, all right, let me just take my hands off. And, uh, I got an email. Um, it was actually right. I was getting my NLP master's training last summer and I was actually practicing one of the modalities on myself before I trained it. And I had this like huge release. And like, in that moment, I get this like notification on my phone and it was like, this there's an opening to apply for a TEDx talk, like there, whatever. So I immediately applied. And then within like two weeks, I got the email saying that I had been accepted to be a speaker in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, last September. It was an amazing experience. I absolutely loved it. I would love to do more. Mm. Um, yeah, very, very good. Wow. Yeah. A lot of power there. And, uh, yeah, you took action as well. You know, sometimes with, uh, things is, is people will get a notification or an email or a phone call and they, they're supposed to call back or they're supposed to reply back and they forget all about it. And so you took action and you, and you, you made it happen too, you know, so you did get invited, but you also took the action and, uh, yes. that's a lot of people miss out that on that part, right? <laughs> they, they don't actually follow through on the fullness of what it could be. So, um, that's excellent. And I'll say with that, like it's, that's the importance of being clear on where you're headed. Mm -hmm. Right. I think they say whatever 2% or 5% of people actually write down their goals and the, you know, if they're not actually written down, they never happen. So yeah. the intentionality of actually saying, this is what I want, had my unconscious mind start looking. Right. So when those emails came through, it wasn't just like, you know, a mix mash of, you know, things to sort through. It was like, that's what my brain is focused on. So go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you ask most people out there, like, who are they or what do they do? They're like, oh, I work at Starbucks or something. You know what I mean? Like, there is no, like, extra to that. There is no, like, philosophy of life or, you know, oh, I help human beings, you know, have a, a, an amazing day. Like, oh, that's that's something I want to go, oh, what does that mean? Like, how do you do that? You know, but when you say you work at Starbucks, oh, okay. Like, you know, it's just, we, most people don't have that mindset of like, no, who are you in this world? Like, what impact are you having? What do you want to accomplish? Um, a lot of people don't go there and don't figure that out. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about this. When we were talking about, um, you know, growing up as a kid, um, let's say that you had weight problem and then you got like all of this, uh, feedback from the parents or the the school or or some friends, you know, that all kind of contributed to it. Um, you know, when we're talking about going through those those tough experiences where you're getting all of those things pushing you from different angles, um, and then we grow up and we're trying to find our way in the world, and we tend to loop those same kind of people in our lives over and over, right? We get those, our parents are in our lives somewhere, right? They're, they're in one friend or another. They're, they're somewhere uh, in our lives. And we, we eventually, if we're good at it, we transcend that. And we see our parents kind of disappear out of our lives in that sense, in the friends and everything. Uh, but in those trauma things, the, the things that are in us, instilled in us, like ingrained in us, in our cells, um, how do we, you know, grow past that? How do we get out of, you know, the, the way of ourselves and our past, um, where we can really see life clearly without the ego and without the programs and without the trauma, like, where do we go to get in that avenue? At least to, to put that stuff on the side of the road as we drive down the road, right? Where, where how do we get there? What do you think? Ooh, these questions are so juicy. I love them so much. <laughs> okay. Well, number one is obviously awareness. Um, specifically when we're talking relationships, cause yes, you're right. You know, we will attract our parents if we're, <laughs> we're not present to the fact that that's going to happen. Um, but to have the awareness that whoever you feel most 
safe and at home with, right? Or like that feels most familiar and it's like, oh my God, but I love them so much. And you like fall in love fast. It's like, it's because of that patterning, right? And it's like, of course you do because that's what, right? Now there was a time in my life where I like had my parents on a pedestal and was kind of like actively seeking that. Um, and so for me, there had to be, and it's different for everybody. It depends. Cause some people come in and they're just like all negative about their upbringing. For me, it was the opposite. It was all positive, but I actually needed to go through a journey of actually owning where I was failed, right? Like the failures and like allowing myself to be angry and pissed about some of those things and how that, you know, led me to attract the wrong kind of energy in my life. And right. So there, you need to allow yourself to be human and also look at where stuff wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it's like a simultaneous, like as you're doing that for yourself and whatever, um, we already know that they did the best that they could do. You know, I hear that all the time. It's like, they were doing that. It's like, yes, yes. And right. Let's talk about you for a second. Right. So, but going, allowing myself to go through that process of kind of unpacking and pulling apart all those aspects. Um, and simultaneously, like that allowed me to accept them, but separate from me, there was also something that I read that was, um, talking about how, you know, we're all born into our biological families and we think that we are of them. But at some point we all, there's a point where we wake up and, and realize that that was never really our family, right? We were always part of God's family, universe's family, whatever. And to separate from that and then actually surrender to like, okay, what does God want for me? Who does God want me to be with? That's going to support me in carrying whatever, you know, I came here to do. Right. So, um, yeah, just that surrendered path in general. Um, and then really questioning everything, you know, especially, you know, I'm taking it the relationship route. It kind of seemed like maybe that was, you know, what kind of it would come out to be, but relationships are everything. Course in Miracles talks about how literally everything is relationships, your relationship to your body, your relationship with food, your relationship with people, your relationship with all of us sitting here together, you know, in space and time experiencing this conversation. Um, but yeah, questioning everything and being willing to kind of not just, you know, go with feelings and whatever, but like, you know, why is that? And asking those deeper questions, which is having, having mentorship is key in that. Yeah. I think, uh, you're talking about, you know, really your authentic self, trying to find that authentic self so that you attract your tribe. And, you know, when we're growing up in a family, we're not authentic yet, not until we get to be adults. And then we really start to find ourselves and figure out what turns us on, what, gets us up in the morning and inspired. Um, and then through our inspired action, we attract the people in our lives that become really our soul family, right? That's the real true people we probably were meant to meet as we go on the ascension of, of our journey. Jaron, you want to add? Oh, sure. I'll just say that you're right. But for some of us, some kids are actually more authentic <laughs> when they're oh, young. Yeah. And then they become less authentic due to due to the conditioning, but it also can be both. Yes, the vice versa. Um, just uh, a thought there. Uh, also, um, I love the uh, synchronicities. I'm sitting here having wake synchronicities and my dream synchronicities coming through you, Leslie, today. So fast fast track is is also my brand, and you mentioned fast track. And then uh, also you brought up Course in Miracles, and it triggered a dream that I had last night of which this guy was trying to shove Course in Miracles course uh miracles down my throat <laughs> and i was like i've already read some of it i'll look again i'll look again it was funny so you just reminded me of that so i say that to people not just to change the subject but i'm in the field right there is a field whether asleep whether awake no matter where it is there's a movie and in the movie there's patterns and there's synchronicities and there's things that tell you and confirm for you many things one is obviously leslie is an amazing uh you know whether you want to call it fractal or soul family or spirit family member. And there's a lot of energy here in this revisiting of this information. That's how I feel anyways, let's see. And then the other thing is, it's like, well, did the Course of Miracles come up for a reason over here? Did this come up for a reason over here? I'm starting to see patterns going on and we want to pay attention, pay attention to these patterns. Absolutely. And then now back to the subject briefly, 
is I don't think most of us ever get beyond our blood family. Some of us do that are in the spiritual pursuit. Some of us do that are in the aspect of spiritual transformation and, you know, growth. But I think most of the world does not, not just in the outside, but in their inner world, right? The inner world is, is, is read by that. And having said that for you all out there that are mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, all that, we love our family too. And sometimes we have family members that also are that we can have both, right? But the idea being, there's a big world out there, people. What box are you in? And most people are in a box. And it's the same thing, going back to the example of the, I work at Starbucks example that Greg gave. I thought to myself, boy, if he asked me that question, I wonder what my answer would be. It would be this robotic expression of subconscious affirmations, which would sound really funny to people out there. But we're in boxes. We need to break out of the boxes and become our full circle become the full Taurus field. And there's an infinite possibility out there for you if you can break the chains of what wasn't a bad thing, but what was there to train you to be more of your real self, to observe contrast in reality, to be unique, to learn wisdom here in this earth plane, and to set yourself free. And as you set yourself free, you set the captives free, which is this time we're in right now for those of us ascending. But that's not for everyone. And that's the thing, again, is if you're attached to things around you to try to push them or save them or make them be, you're inhibiting the plan or God's plan, uh, God's path or the quantum plan for you, which is to live in your image. And then as you live in your image and you attract your tribe and you're in that co-creative synergy and they're in all their images and create all the things they create, that's how we help the collective to the most. But it starts with you in going on your individual journey. You cannot go on your individual journey if you're stuck in the box. And I'm not saying the box is just automatically gone or there's not goods to it. We're talking on a relative scale of am I checking into myself to break free and to be myself more authentically and to believe that the cosmos loves me and it's out there to support me in my dreams beyond this scarcity, beyond this family or societal norms, beyond the all the mediums that has been plagued in the institutions of what we believe life is. And remember that Really, it's a free will game that you have the choice of experiencing anything. Yeah, amazing stuff there. Um, love creation of of souls, you know, together. The doing this because the most amazing answers come out when you just kind of stir around the pot, and uh, you know, you you go out in public situations, and um, you know, people talk about a lot. You know, in situations of making relationships, finding people to date, whatever it is. And they go, how do you do this, right? How, you know, they want to know, how does it work? Well, number one, you got to find your authentic self. That's that's the first one. You go out with a script in your in your head, it's not going to work because it's not being authentic. You, the, people pick up on energy very quickly. Um, but you know, there's there's two ways to motivate people. You can manipulate them or you can inspire them. And really, what you want to do is you want to inspire people when you go out places. And it's just a matter of just practicing talking to people and inspiring people, right? And what kind of what kind of questions, what kind of subjects can you bring to the table that's going to stir something up inside somebody to want to talk and open up and open their heart and open their soul to you, right? And these kind of conversations of who do you, who are you, right? Who what do you believe in? Those type of situations, people love to open up and really tell you what they believe in. And how they feel, right? And a lot of times I'll ask somebody, um, do you believe you have a soul? And they say yes. And I say, well, point to it. What part of your body has, where is your soul? And they'll give different answers, right? But it's a very awesome way to start a conversation with people and to get them to open up and to feel comfortable in your presence. Um, I think a lot of times we start off with conversations that are very uncomfortable for people. They're like, why are you asking me this question? Like the, it's a question that is digging into uh, 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 places where you're trying to manipulate the situation, get, get an answer out of them that you want, right? If you want to date somebody, let's say. You're going up with a line to try to get them to you know, answer you in a way that you can start a conversation where you can bring them home, right? That type of thing. Where if you're actually being genuine and authentic, uh, this is what I talk a lot about in the Alpha and Command, uh, is that you um, 
now are presenting something that's creating a space with heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And that's so much of a different place to be. And I think that's what the conversations we're talking about. When we grow up in a family, and as Jaron said, as a child, yes, you are more authentic. You're probably more authentic than you are even as an adult, even enlightened, right? Um, but you don't have the... Uh, you don't have the, the resources to go out and find your family, right? But as an adult, you do. So as you authentically open up and you get more and more to that child, right? The remembrance of being that child out of the womb, you start to now be able to explore the world, and especially now with the internet even more, you can explore the world as who you truly are and find that soul family that you connect with. Uh, so you know, that being all that authentic self, right? Connecting at the heart, this conversation right now is in that realm of the auras mixing together and being and becoming something uh, of one, right? That's what we always talk about, being one on this planet. We are all mere images of one another. Leslie, when you see yourself or your clients, do you see how often we look in the mirror and reflect back to one another as we have relationships and actually hate the other person? Because they're so similar to who we really are. What do you think of that, Absolutely. Leslie? 100%. Everything's a mirror. You know, you can look around everything that's around you. The people you're around, the environment you're living in. Like, everything is a mirror of what you currently believe and what you feel like you deserve. And, um, you know, we can we can choose to do with that with whatever we want. And, you know, the five people we hang out with the most is who we become. And... I remember specifically because I was traveling for two and a half years internationally um, and COVID brought me back and, uh, you know, bought my first home as a result of that um, back in my hometown. And I was still like, I didn't really have a lot of in-person friends because I was doing lots of coaching groups. So everything was virtual even before COVID and re recognized for myself, I was like, I'm still kind of like waiting for like high school friends from the past to like come back in my vortex because I'm back in this location. I was like, no, like I need to go out and see, I'm a new person now. I need to go out and make new friends and see who I'm attracting now, mm -hmm. you know, and I set that intention. And then now I have more friends I know what to do with that. I <laughs> freaking love, you know, right around where I'm from and have really built this life for myself, but it's, I built it, you know, and you got to just get sick and tired of your current circumstances or the same old, same old conversations happening enough to say, okay, and get clear on what you want to have and then go out there and get it today. There's no, there's no excuses today. Like <laughs> I found my friends on uh Bumble BFF Bumble's a dating app, but they mm -hmm. have a BFF section oh. and everything came out of that. So it's like, it, you you can do anything just go for it yeah, yeah. A amen sister to, the, to all you just said there because yeah you 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 noticed you were the observer and you said i'm a different person now who am i waiting for why am i talking about my old you know classmates or this or that i need to go out and express who i am and find those people that really resonate with who i am now and that's amazing that you know you had that you know, realization and you, you got a little angry, you got a little, little revved up. And sometimes we got to do that. And sometimes a coach got to do that for us. I got to rev us up and tell us, what are you doing? You know, stop being a loser. Let's go get out there and, and do some things change. Don't be afraid of uh, change because life is, and always will be change. But we, we just concentrate on those constants so much. We just want those constants, those, those things that that football game will be on this Sunday. You know, we just we look forward to that whole week to just get to that Sunday and sit down and watch your team lose and get all mad, right? It, you, you, you miss life all in between there because you were looking for that constant that you knew that that's, that's, that would be your happy moment, right? But really every moment, if you're in it, it's amazing. You, you're catalyzing the moment. If you're there and you're observing, uh, anything can happen, right? And, uh, and we got to look at things in an optimistic way. You know, we get bit by a bumblebee and we get all mad, but, you know, maybe there was a reason for that to happen. Look, keep watching because something might come of it, right? There was a reason why that happened. And maybe you ran into somebody because you got 
bit by the bee and you told the story and then it turned into something de- you know else it catalyzed so we have to be observant of those things as well um, yeah, and just to add like some fuel to that for people it's like diseases manifest addiction manifests mm. out of you're not paying attention to the fact that change has happened and you need to do something about it yeah. you know like that is the final your body's final you know flag that it raises to say, Hey, you've been ignoring me for decades yeah. <laughs> about this area of your life that you're not happy in or multiple, you know, I've seen it countless times where, you know, I even, um, volunteer for the leukemia and lymphoma society and each meeting for the leadership team, we have a story of someone who, you know, was in remission now from cancer and all of them were like, I was in a toxic marriage. I hated my job. I, and then the cancer diagnosis was the thing that got them to actually change that in a big way. And then they went into remission. Yes, they still use modern day medicine for help, but like the major life changes happen. So it's like, we're doing our part in making our preventative health care. You know, that's why I left nursing. I did nursing for several years and kidney transplant and the surgical neuro ICU and highly value medicine and science. But you know, I saw so many times and kept studying on my own of the fact that if you're not following your passions, if you're not, you know, happy in your day to day life, you get sick and you overeat and you drink alcohol too much and you smoke and that leads to the disease. But nobody's working on that. Right. So I always say to people who are considering signing up with me of being like, we're either going to pay for it now or going to pay for it later. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, will this, you know, thousands of dollars be worth it, you know, when you're on your deathbed in 10 years, because you never looked at this stuff, you know, it's like, but some people are moved by that. And some people aren't. And how can we trust that too? But I just, I have enough evidence now to know that's the case. Yeah, it's usually um, the last minute ditch effort to go that way. And uh you know, a lot of people will come to me and be like, oh, can you teach me all the, the natural things that you're doing? And because because I'm, I'm sick right now. And I'm like, well, honestly, you can do some of these things and they might help. Right. But this is needed to be a consistent thing for years. And then it would have been a huge difference in your life. So it's consistency. You know, it's it's just like the person who um, wants to get in shape and they, they go to the gym for nine hours and they're like, okay. I'm in shape now. No, that didn't work that way. You had to be consistent over three months, you know, three times a week, half hour, you know, each session to actually see those results. Uh, It's consistency, right? It's not that intensity in the moment of trying to change it. And that's the same with manifestation, you know, it's got to be consistent in your life and your thoughts, the spells you're casting every moment. Um, If you're not doing that and you're trying to just manifest in in a, in a, three hour period, you know, cause you took some class, uh, well more power to you. Maybe magic can happen, but, um, it's probably more the consistency that's going to really bring you to that spot. Right. And bring that to your life. So, you know, well, Dr. Joe Dispenza in his studies of spontaneous remissions of diseases, you know, found that it wasn't everybody who spontaneously remissed and all do fasting or juice cleanses or believe in God or do modern medicine or do vitamin A, like none of that was in common. But the only thing they had in common was that whatever modality of treatment that they chose for themselves, they believed with Mm -hmm. 100% certainty that that modality was going to cure them. So absolutely nothing wrong with dabbling and looking into But it's like how like don't stop until you find something that is an absolute yes or maybe, you know, you get that, you know, three you hear it all the time, you know, in a row like you were talking about before, uh, Darren, right? Um, And and go after it with every ounce of your Mm -hmm. being once you find it. Yeah. Um, you know, working in the hospital is like the doctors will tell you, this is the only thing you need to do. And you might know, like, and trust your doctor and you might just want, and maybe that's good. Right. Cause maybe you also believe with 100% certainty, but if there is any ounce of doubt that you feel about d- the direction you're going, you better go and look around until you feel a hundred percent certain for best results. Yeah. And it could be a hard look too, because it's something that you might not want to change, but you see it as the the big red X, right? And you're like, oh God, like I don't want to change that part of my life. But, um, but sometimes yeah. it's the answer, right? It keeps, it, it keeps so pushing scary. on you, right? 
I have had people who have come to me and like, they know it's their marriage, you know, but they're like, I don't want, it's like, no one's going to make you leave your marriage. Right. right? And it's, you're not there, but if you don't actually look at yourself, mm -hmm. right. And start working on what you can control in this moment, like things aren't going to go well either way. So yeah. you don't have to do the huge thing that you don't want to do now. Cause I do think there's things to learn. You are ready when you're ready yeah. and you know, when you're ready, but if not, then, you know, again, the lessons you still have to learn are available to you, but get support for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It could be, you know, a job uh, that is just killing you. It could be um, a friendship that is toxic. There's all kinds of things that it could be that you just don't want to leave or you're afraid to because you're afraid to say that and see the res that sometimes you get the, the kickback from the person or the place or whatever that you're you don't want to be willing to walk through it. But when you're willing, at least you observed it and you know it's coming. And when it happens, sometimes you can see the the quickly how how it transforms your life immediately. Like the next yeah. day, you're like, oh my God, what a lift of, of weight off my shoulders, right? And you can start to then rebuild and uh, and then have some amazing things happen. Um, yeah, and I think we're just dancing a little bit around the main thing of like learning how to trust yourself, mm -hmm. learning how to listen, mm -hmm. learning how to like know when something is your intuition versus like old patterning. Because um, if you can master learning how to trust yourself and listening and then acting on it, that's key. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to go into Jaren's manifestation moment. And uh, when we come back, we'll do some a more amazing conversation with Leslie. All right, here we go. Manifestation moment. So for today's manifestation moment, we're going to take a little break from what we've been doing, and we're going to dive into the Oracle of the Cosmic Way again. I do these every few months. I feel them very appropriate for the collective field. So that is this book right here. You might not be able to see it, so I'm going to quit trying. Oh, there we go. And five minutes before the show today, I said, all right. The cosmos, prime creation of all things. What is a great message for today to come up with? So I didn't think about it. I just then flipped the page and I went directly to hexagram 18. So we're going to talk about that, which is also gene 18 that has many ways to view it, whether in human design systems, gene key systems, many others. But we're going to look at the I Ching way, but without the spells the original book of transformation versus change. It's not the book of changes, it's the book of transformation. And whether we have these or not in our unique imprint conditioning wise, meaning it's something that we consistently go through, or whether we are experiencing this through other people and transits of time, we all experience these things. Okay, all of us experience all 64 of the archetypes that also represent the zeros and ones of our natural selves our nature selves our unique combination but let's take a look universally collectively at what wanted to be stated today so 18 recognizing and correcting the causes of decay sounds appropriate for some of our conversation today the great water the sage informs us and there's a little passage i'm skipping that's a little bit metaphoric but let's get to the point <laughs> the great water the sage informs us the sage is the prime creator consciousness of all things that is also potential within everyone at any time so it's not separate stands for the dangerous ideas that cause decay and create the parallel reality the parallel reality Crossing this water stands for a person's effort to identify these ideas and dispose of them. Whenever someone undertakes this task, he or she is furthered by the helpers, the cosmic helpers, 
On a quantum to atomic level, the invisible, invisible helpers of all of creation support you. That's what they're speaking to. When you are looking to deprogram and retransform a spell, a poison arrow, something in you that you're wanting to release. This hexagram can point to such ideas in oneself or in others with whom one is involved. As the lines of this hexagram indicate, there would be six of them. These ideas have been handed down by tradition, and the person has accepted them unreflectingly. He or she now needs to question, with the help of the sage, beliefs he or she has perceived to be or presumed to be true. Question beliefs or presumed to be true. But in particular, those that have been exalted by the collective ego, the collective ego and its institutions, for no other reason than that they are age old. They're just old. The particular beliefs are indicated in the lines. A person may also receive this hexagram when the decanite idea has manifested as ill health, the breakdown of a relationship, an economic crisis or other problem. He or she is informed that the causes of the decay come from the collective ego, to which he has turned over his inner center and thereafter looks to it for the approval of everything he does. One of the objects of correcting the causes of decay is to become centered within oneself. This can be achieved through meditation and various other exercises of centering yourself. The collective ego originated in the myths and stories early humans told around campfires about the heroic deeds of their ancestors. The first stage in this development was the creation of the clan we, by which the individual identified himself with the heroic deeds of his ancestral clan. This tradition continues today in the group we, right? The group we, the herd, whereby the individual identifies with his family, particular culture, race, and nation. In this identification process, the authority of the individual over himself is turned over to the group with which his identity becomes merged through various procedures of conditioning. And I chose just a few paragraphs out of that. Skipped a little. I think they're very relative, uh, relevant to the some of the topics we have been talking about on today's Rise show. For all of you that are seeing the clip, highly recommend you watch Leslie on our show as our guest today. It's a wonderful show. And so we're talking about the collective ego, its institutions, and the group we that carries on from traditions is passed on to including family dynamics that's then passed on to the children that then we just identify to. That's how it is. This is the truth. And we become subject to the box of all those things. It does not mean that some things within that are cosmically true or are you know, universally relevant or are positive for you. But what it does say is many of them are not. And we are just walking around on autopilot because that's how life is because we were trained that. We were trained that as children, not only from family dynamics, but also from our schooling, from the TV, from the everything else, from the friends, from the group we, from the area we live in, from this is how men are, this is how women are. From the this is how time is, Monday through Friday is the work, and Saturday and Sunday is off. All these identities that are absolute illusion and absolute not true, but you have carried them in your imprint. We all have. So when we want to deprogram the causes of decay, we must look at the areas, the spells, the poison arrows, these imprints, these emotional imprints or mental belief system um, aspects that have us in a construct it keeps us there because we're trying to fit into the outside, we're trying to fit into what society would love of us. We're trying to fit into what makes the family happy. We're trying to even fit everybody into those roles that we want them to be instead of looking at everything as is, objectively, freshly, and unattached, loving yet unattached. And for you, yourself, 
you can take a look at one area. Is it my health? Is it my wealth? Is it my purpose? Or is it my sister? Is it my lover? Is it my business partner? Or any other thing that's going on in your life? And perhaps a belief system. That would be a big one. Or an emotional imprint. The trauma we talked about expressing earlier today, releasing it, then looking at it and making a different choice. We need to look at where the root of all these things are, feel into our true authentic self, connect with the cosmic harmony of the whole, because that's what happens when we become our unique self. And we recognize that the cosmos is for us, not against us. And we recognize that there is help all around, including from your own intelligence of your body, your avatar. Set a new intention from clarity and move forward in the new. And commit to it, as was stated earlier, Greg just mentioned, through consistency of the new point of attention, intention, and inner work and outer work to program, program ourselves in a new way to now be our authentic self and we can end the decay. The health is caused by something. The relationship is caused by something, whatever it may be. Now, we don't need to destroy everything. I'm not promoting that either. What we do need to do is destroy the entanglement that is irrelevant or is of lower frequency. And we need to do that from within ourselves first before anything else outside of us. We are the ones self-responsible. We are not victims. Remember, hexagram 55 is going to point to we are not victims, but we are behaving as such. Life is not just random. You yourself have co-created it. You yourself have the self-responsibility to then transform from the inside out. From what? Not mind over matter only. No, your spirit self, your true self. Your true self that is piercing through this avatar in this realm we're in right here that has a body, that has a mind, that has emotions, and that has circumstances in life, but you are not any of those. You are not. So you must arrive and rise to your high seat. Gather your spirit point of attention. Tell your mind the new. And as you do so, your body will then follow that. And you will watch life follow that. In summing up, remember, think about it. I'm outdating myself at this point, but think about a TV with a remote control. Don't come from the remote. You are the person holding the remote. What is the remote control? It's your mind, it's your body, it's your emotions. You are not any of them. You are responsible and have the capability and the potential to shift all of them. As you shift them, you change the station. The frequency in your field will change and you will manifest. So grab the remote and not only manifest positive things, let's look at what is the challenge. Let's look at where the spells and things are coming from. Let's see it in a fresh lens and let's work on ourselves. Then we must live as that, be it. You don't manifest you want what you want. You manifest who you're being, what you're vibrating, how you're acting. So then we walk out in the world and we do our highest to align to that and respond versus react, but communicate where needed. Say the outer no to the ego in another when needed. Say the outer no or in the inner no to yourself when it wants to happen. Say the outer no to the collective villain of the quote unquote matrix itself and it's and it's norm. And say the yes to your true spirit. Say the yes to see the true spirit in another. And say the yes to the loving field, the quantum field, the cosmic kingdom, queendom that's around you and operate in cosmic harmony and growth and expansion together as we liberate ourselves and we rise into the new frontiers of this new earth, this ascension, and inevitably living your higher purpose in its greatest, living your passions to the fullest, and experiencing spiritual and material abundance inside and out to be an imprint and a support for the others around you and to affect this world in a loving, enlightened legacy. So check out your spells, 
always recommending the Oracle of the Cosmic Way, the I Ching, for all of you all to support with many of these deprogramming spells. And that is your manifestation moment for today. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kenyon, for your manifestation moment. Of course, always a fun one. Yeah, the I Ching, it's almost like tarot cards, right? You, you open up to where you feel, you know, the page wants to open and you can read and amazing uh, wisdom in there um, and a great, great topic today. Uh, Leslie, when we talk about cosmic help, I know you mentioned God before. Um, do you believe in outside forces, cosmic help? Can you call upon it to, to, to assist you? What do you think, Leslie? Yeah, 100%. I recently just posted on my personal Facebook page, there's this um, little boy who's, um, what do they call it? We call him like a star seed, yep. the, the belief that he, yeah. And uh, his mom is a intuitive or psychic or medium or something. And she asked him, uh, you know, what is God and all of this type. And um, he was just, I wish I had the exact words, but just the energy that everything every atom like nothing would exist without this energy that is god um and he said yeah you can talk to it you can you can pray to it you can ask it for things and it can move and you know things can be created as the result and we're all made out of the same thing uh so yes <laughs> leslie let me let's go outside the box a little bit even more Mm -hmm. Um, where we live right now, what is this place? Um, because I have a strong suspicion that this is somewhat of a simulation world mm -hmm. and that, you know, when you're talking about everything is alive, everything is a force, everything you can ask, you know, for assistance to, um, you know, every tree, every blade of grass perhaps has its own way of energy and can be um, an assistant to you. Um, what's your idea of, I mean, have you thought about this? Uh, what do you, what are you thinking uh, about the simulation theory? If I actually had the answer, then maybe even though rise TV is the best, I would hope maybe I was a little <laughs> on something <laughs> that was broadcasted around the world for that answer. And, uh, <laughs> What came to me in that I um, loved microbiology in college. And one of the reasons that I love microbiology was because I literally felt as I was studying these cells under these this microscope and learning about the fact that these cells have metabolisms and they have like all of these aspects that we have. I'm like, I'm studying us right now. Like, yeah. this is bizarre. And I was like, so how is our earth? Like what our earth is under in the Petri dish somewhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, and we're being studied by somebody else above us and, you know, our metabolisms and ways of being, and you know what I mean? So, yep. I mean, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing of what actually is and the micro-ness that we actually are. And um, yeah, it's pretty fun to to go there and wonder. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had thoughts of what if we were a cell in someone's body and that we were just roaming around their body, you know, as this plane yes. or this universe. And then there's so many others that create that body. And then the micro, the macro level of that. And like, you could really just burn your brain out if you wanted to, <laughs> this kind of thinking, but it's a lot of fun. And I think it's, it's a useful activity and exercise to keep yourself in check, to keep yourself in the belief that anything is possible. And uh, because the moment you get fixated on a subject or a thing and you think this is concrete, the universe is about to ready to give you a blind punch to the face <laughs> because it's going to show you a whole different thing. So it's pretty interesting if you uh, really keep your eyes open and uh, your yeah. possibilities open. Michael A. Singer, who wrote The Surrender Experiment and Untethered Soul, talks about how whenever things got really stressful, he would imagine himself zooming out and looking down on earth and seeing the fact that he was you could not you know completely insignificant yeah. from there 
and it helped him just kind of deal with day-to-day stress and it's like yeah nothing's actually yeah we, we get <laughs> that significant so caught up in the everyday life and all the little micro things that are going on and the emotional storms we put ourselves through over things that really in the big picture have no impact but they just we just have this fantastic ability <laughs> to take these little things and make them huge right and so uh it's just interesting to watch just fellow humans do this right and just observe uh I, one of my most fun activities is to sit on a bench and just watch the world do their thing and like mm-hmm. observe and go people watching is just fascinating um and and the things they do and the way they interact with their own wife or their own kids or their own uh, you know, friends or whatever, you're just watching it and just observing it and just their environment. And, and, you know, they get an ice cream cone and it's melting too fast. What are they doing? You know, how do they take care of their problem? <laughs> so just interesting to, to watch all that. Mm-hmm, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Jaren, do you have anything to add to that before I uh, move into my next little thing I want to bring up? Oh God, it would be too much. So I'll say no, other than I, uh, I align with Greg in the sense that, first of all, all in the cosmos is a hologram. So all of it's illusion, inevitably. Having said that, the construct or the realm we're in is absolutely a simulation. There is actually anti-math patterns of what we exist in, which is all okay. It's the ultimate game. So you're in the ultimate game. You're not um, really here but we perceive and we experience to be here. And it's the ultimate game in that we forgot who we are. So our memories are wiped clear. So we're up against kind of negative programming to cause ourselves to rise and to behave even in higher principle ethics and morals, especially at this timing to ascend. But we're not here to save the world and we're not here to change the system. This is the ultimate here to outgrow this system, evolve say that's enough i've reached my place it's time to exit the simulation and many of you are doing so and as we do so we'll remember who we really are on the other side and this copy of reality and in this one experience we're playing out so how's that for my two minute answer great stuff there jaron and you triggered me to say that you know when we talk about morals and ethics i follow that to an extent but there is 20 percent of me at least that says fuck that i'm gonna do something different today. I'm going to go outside the box. I'm going to paint outside the lines Um, because, you know, playing to those rules so much, you see that there's so many other people out there that aren't playing to those rules and they're just taking advantage of every opportunity. Right. And so I like to just dabble a lot in that area as well um, to, to see how far I can push the limits a little bit and then come back to the morals and the ethics for a little bit. <laughs> so I do a little bit of dance of both. The balance, you know? So Yeah. Good stuff. Cosmic morals, not human morals. Yeah. yeah that's true too. Big difference. Would you kill someone? No, of course not. Yeah. See? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got me there. You got me there. <laughs> but absolutely. Right. No, no. It's unique yeah. to self. Yeah. 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 So uh, let me get into this quickly because we're going we're gonna to get back. To, I think relationships, and I think you mentioned this, Leslie, relationships are such the big picture of everything that's going on here. And that's why I think leadership is so important because we're helping to facilitate relationships and have those tough conversations. So if we look at like taking the aspect of God first, right, uh, whatever that is belief to you, Uh, independent access to the transcendent states, right? When you're in that zone, right? You're putting that higher self picture, the why I'm here uh, example first in your life when you get up in the morning. But a lot of people, when they wake up in the morning, they go straight to their phone, straight to the news, straight to Facebook. And all of a sudden, whatever it might be, let's just say politics, right? They go right into the politic game. And they just start thinking about it. And then they get up and they go brush their teeth and they're thinking about politics. They're in the shower. They're politics, politics. They get to sit down to eat their breakfast. Politics, politics. Right? They get to work and they maybe someone else is talking about it. And then they get into it. You know. So their whole day starts off on this path that's bringing them down this exit that is like there is no true transcendent answer down that 
path. You are lost in your focus, right? And Jaron talks about focused attention a lot. Where are you putting your attention all day long? And people, you know, they get caught in these, these paths. Um, so we really want to get down that, that highway to that, that, that big transcendent vision of who you want to be. So that's first, right? Taking that. But then we come up against people, even when we're in that path. We come against people. And have you seen the show Cobra Kai? Or you know Karate Kid Cobra Kai? Okay. Well, let me just tell you that Cobra Kai was the evil um, karate place compared to the, the dojo that was the karate kid. Cobra Kai always said, sleep, sweep the leg. Like, do the cheating, right? Do the things that are going to get you ahead uh, in the match, right? Even if you're going to get points deducted just to win, right? They were just all about winning. And so when I look at people that you have conversations with on a daily basis, a lot of times if you start going down pathways of wanting to have a conversation to open them up, to make them um, see some things, right? You're not trying to attack them. You're just trying to ha open their world, right? That they will sweep the leg. They will go for the thing that will get you out of the ring. They don't want you to be down that path with them. So when we're having conversations with friends, with, with, with significant others, with family especially, a lot of close relationships are this way, right? And that's why Jaron talks about when you have a coach, it's much different for a while. People will listen to you because you, they've hired you. They're, they're looking at you in that status of this is where I want to head. So please help guide me. Where when you're in a family, friend, uh, um, significant other uh, a conversation, that's a different realm. Because you have these, these sides that are coming into it that are, that are, you know, don't tell me what to do <laughs> type of thing, right? That attitude. So there's a sweep of the leg type of uh, attitude that's there. And maybe you've even been there where you've swept the leg and you said, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. What the hell was I thinking? Why did I do that? Now you're going back and you want to apologize to the person later on because you, you went there because you wanted to win in that certain situation. So we're having these tough, tough situa uh, tough conversations. How do we as leaders, as transformative leaders, have these uncomfortable conversations with people and not get them to want to sweep your leg. <laughs> wow. Well, I've definitely learned this lesson in, in many ways. I like to think that I'm pretty good at it now. Uh, but I know as projectors, right, we can see things for people very well. <laughs> that if they were just to follow our advice or take that action, their entire life would be better. And when people don't receive our advice, we feel bitter. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I dealt with that a lot, you know, especially it, for me, uh, family was the first, you know, lesson around that, that took many years of, you know, wanting to change them and fix them and guide them and show them what they should be doing and was met with tons of resistance. And, you know, luckily my family is ride or die. So <laughs> nobody abandoned me, but they could have, if they weren't, um, and, uh, yeah, so really those boundaries, first of all, of like, if, unless someone's paying me, I don't give advice. Mm. Uh, my job is just to love and support and, and say, you're doing great and let them know I'm here for you. If you ever need anything or, you know, you can share an experience, right. Of like, oh, you know, this happened to me or this happened to a friend I saw and they did that and it worked really well for them. Have you ever thought about doing anything like that? Like I also mm. watch my energy. Like I just stay extremely neutral. Like I don't care what they do. <laughs> yeah. Even if there's this, you know, little part of me that does. Um, I also had to work on myself in looking at why I had that level of energy to want to help someone like that. Um, for family specifically, I had to actually acknowledge that I had a huge fear of any of them dying. Mm. Like it was bigger than I thought it was. Um, and so that was great awareness because then I got to actually process some of that pain and fear for myself. That was mine. Um, and then also having the spiritual belief of everybody is on their own divine path. And even if theirs looks drastically different and they're taking something that I have a belief system is wrong and bad or not the right path, like that does not mean it's not the right path for them. 
Um, so also trusting that everything that's coming into their cosmic circle is what needs to be there for them too, you know? Um, yeah, I think those are my main, my main things. Um, and then, yeah, just if I do have an idea, if they're not a client that I know that I believe could help them, I'll just send them a link and, you know, share it. But like, I don't, I'm not pestering about it and I'm not, and I, I, I've had to just surrender of like, well, God's got them, you know? Yeah. And they know I'm here. And I said and shared, you know, I don't say it though, uh, often it's just asking questions and, Oh, that sounds like a good, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like you should be doing anything else? Is there anything that you're not doing that you think that you want to be doing? Right. Like I might ask kinds of questions that would have them take a deeper look, you know? Yeah. And then if they're like, well, I have thought about hiring this holistic person for this medical thing. Oh, cool. What makes you think about that? Right. Like I'll let that, like I might ask just like to get more interested. Right. And that also is lighting up the neural networks. Like it could help them get closer to maybe a conversation that they haven't been willing or unable to yeah. tap into themselves. Right. Um, but again, I watch my energy and I make sure that I am experiencing low attachment and I'll be like, yeah, you know, like, oh, well, that sounds like a good idea. I've heard people have had great experiences with holistic healers like that. Um, and then after, if I talk to them again, I might be like, oh, did you ever like go down that holistic healer route? Right. And they might be like, no, I decided against it. It's like, okay. And then I let it go and trust their path again. That's about what it looks like for me. Yeah, great stuff there. And uh, Jaren, you talk about a lot with the, the the new ascension coming our way is that, you know, helping people in that way um, is actually, you know, we got to really get into our own path and stay out of the way of their path and just let them develop. And I, and I love that that way. You know, it's it's almost like being in the therapy office and they just keep on asking you questions. You're like, wait a minute, therapist. I thought you were trying to heal me. You're just keep asking me questions. But it that's really the deepest way you can get into yourself is through question asking. Uh, if Jared? I see oh, someone sorry. also like that's consistently suffering with the same exact thing, I may just call a spade a spade and be like, listen, you've been dealing with the same thing for a while and you've talked about doing that and you've talked about it, but if you're not actually doing anything. Yeah. Like, don't you think it's actually like what's stopping you from actually doing something, right? There might be a kind of a more, right? Direct. You know, try to yeah. wake up in that moment you know? Um, but yeah. yeah. Jaren, you're good. All right. So yeah, you know, when, when it comes to, um, those tough conversations, I, I love that, you know, where you have to, it's, it takes patience and it takes boundaries and it takes you pushing on the brakes and going Leslie or Greg get, no, no, not don't, don't be pushy. Just listen. Right. And um, I talk about uh, meditation a lot, and I say that meditation isn't just an action for yourself to train yourself how to be quiet and still. It's also for relationships. You're able to be still in front of somebody and allow them to talk to you, and you listen without reacting yet. Listen, absorb, give them the moment to just express People just love to express. Sometimes they don't want an answer at all. They just want to express. They just want to get it all out. They put it all on the canvas and then they can organize it. But they just need you to be there as the talking post, right? So we tend to be a little um, pushy in the sense of when people come to us and want to have a conversation, we want to be able to fix them, right? Especially men, us men want to fix things. And what happens is that's not what they want. And you're like, I'm giving you advice. Why aren't you taking it? Right. You know, that type of thing. But actually it's, they just need somebody to express to and actually listen to them. And then if you are a really good listener, they will thank you for listening. That's how you know you did it. But the meditation teaches you to go within and to just open and just be open and just be absorbing of their, their information instead of trying to react. Your brain is just that reactive organ and it just wants to like, it's already got something ready to, to say one sentence in to what they've said. <laughs> like, <laughs> relax, just allow it to go and, and, and you'll be much better off in that situation. So 
Yeah. And I think developing, like using that, like, it's like, what can you control in that situation? So if you're in a relationship and you feel like you can't meet your wife's needs, okay, well, I'm missing something. And can I, you know, what support can I get to learn more about how to communicate better with my wife? You know, like uh, there's always, yeah, a way to do that. But when you really master listening, it's the best. Like you really start hearing things in between like it's like okay they're saying this but I actually hear that they have this deep need to feel loved right now or like they feel like they don't matter and then you just like you're not responding to the words anymore it's just like all you do like you hear I don't matter as they're talking it's just like you matter to me so much yeah and you just see them melt because that's true listen it's like oh my god I hit it you know and it feels so good when you get that but it does take like really stepping back and learning these things and yeah, practice. Yeah. Again, practicing to be a human being. (laughs) It's amazing. But, uh, you know, we're so far away from the tribal times where we were communities and sitting around in circles around fires and telling stories and just being there for one another, uh, being a safe space for one another, picking each other up as we fell down. Uh, there's not a lot of community like that anymore. So, That's why coaches are so important. That's why those conversations are so important with friends. If friends can need somebody to uh, just be that safe space that where they can express and they can talk and you may not have to say anything at the end. It's just that you were there for them in that situation and uh, just listening and they might just need a hug or you, you know. can also ask for clarification in if, if you're not sure, right? Because if someone has also done work on themselves and they might be able, like I would come up to someone and say, like, I don't want you to do anything or fix anything. I just want to say some stuff because I think it'll help me feel better. Are yeah. you available for that? Yeah. Someone might not, you know, set up the conversation as powerfully. And so, but if you need to clarify, it can be like, I'm hearing everything you're saying and I want to do everything I can to, you know, do you want me to just listen are you looking for an answer? Yeah. Right. And then they'll tell you. And then, yeah. so it's just like you, you don't have to figure it out. You actually ask them what they want. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it just, it just shows your ability to step back, right. That the whole step back, step back thing. Um, and to disengage for the moment in the activity of life and just be there in the moment and just be with the person. And say, okay, what are they looking for from me right now? And I believe that it's just this. And maybe you do ask them that question of, is it okay if I just listen? Right? That's a big question right there. And I also keep getting pinged to to share this. Maybe somebody needs to hear it. Of um, There was a point in my life where I um, kept running into a wall uh, with a family member. And every time that I would like share something that felt important for me to share, they would have a reaction that like felt unkind and like I wasn't cared for and whatever. And I would, it would just stop there every time. And I saw that it was like, okay, we're never going to have a relationship, you know, because of this. And, um, I actually got coaching, uh, from that conversation. And the coach said to me, Um, did you ask that person why they reacted that way when you said it? And I was like, no. Right. So sometimes when we get triggered in these conversations and relationships, we can't think about anything else except ourselves. Mm. Right. But if we can actually like put ourselves aside for a second and be with that reaction. And and I, so the next time it happened, I stepped towards it and I said, you know, I shared this thing that was really intimate with, to me. And I shared it because you're important to me and I want to have this relationship with you. I'm just curious, like, why did you have that kind of reaction? And then they shared their answer and it was something completely different than the story that I made up in my mind. Yes. And it was the fact that this person, like they don't, they're not into personal development. They're not self-aware enough to like not have a reaction and, you know, have a conversation about it. And I got to see that it was just like, well, I invested so much in that. And so then I got to be there first for their emotional thing they were dealing with and like satisfy their need. And then on the other side of that, they were able to satisfy mine. Um, and it completely revolutionized my relationship and my, and I believe that changed the relationship with this person for my entire family because I had that breakthrough and shared it. Um, 
So I know a lot of people have issues with parents and I, you know, people that are really close with them and then it has them completely like excommunicate family. But I, I just also know that if we're willing to inquire and get curious and put ourselves aside, um, we can have those relationships come back together. Uh, another one that was similar, I had a, a grandparent and she would talk about her past in this way that was like upsetting. And like, we kind of wanted her to feel complete before she passed away with her life because she kept bringing this up. Um, and I practiced the same thing. I watched all of um, her children, my aunts and uncles, you know, talking about this, like, oh, she keeps bringing this up. And we just, and everybody had a different idea for how to fix it for her, Right. So she came over for dinner. She's like 93 at the time or something. And she, here she goes. She's saying it again. And I was just like, hey, grandma, like I noticed that you talk about this a bunch of times. I'm just curious, like what has you keep bringing that story up? And she thinks for a second, she's like, oh, she's like, I guess I'm just so proud of myself that I survived. Hmm. And like the whole family was floored. Like I just saw my dad's face like, what? Like that's why she's talking about it? Like she's. Like we thought like, you know, and it's just like, but it completely healed that entire, because like she was trying to have this part of herself unconsciously be seen, right. And have someone feel proud of her for this, but she didn't know how to communicate that. So it just came out the story over and over again. So now it's, now it's put to bed because we asked that one question and asked them why. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a transformational moment right there. I mean, that's, that's amazing that, that, uh, and then it gives you that inner peace as the family member of being like, oh, I'm not worried or trying to figure this out. I got it, you yeah. know, and now you can keep moving on with your life, too. That's great stuff. And also you brought up that um, a lot of times the things that we think people are thinking or why they react to the way they do is way off base. A lot of times it has to do a lot to do with them and a situation that happened or maybe the mood they were in at the time or there's a lot of factors to things. And um, we, we, we usually have the story wrong until we ask the question and then we actually get the story. So uh, be careful on uh, being already convinced on what you believe happened or whatever. It's, it's usually a bias. It's usually something that's very off. Pretty much never about you. <laughs> no. I actually love asking questions about that whenever, like I never, actually, I almost never take things personally now when people react because I've asked enough times people of why, and it's never about me, you know? <laughs> so it's like, okay. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting stuff. All right. We're going to get to uh, my transformational leadership video. So everybody sit back and enjoy. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college and I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table, like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it would be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here at like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 6 15 earliest and then like I don't have time to do anything I don't I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either like I don't have energy to work out like that's out the window like I'm so upset oh my god nothing to do with my job at all but just like the nine to five schedule in general is crazy being in the office nine to five like if it was remote you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine but like I'm not home it takes me long to get home and like like people that drive to the office like it doesn't you don't get off at five and I know it could be worse I know I could be working longer but like I literally get off it's pitch black like I don't have energy how do you have friends like how do you have time to like meet like a guy I don't know like how do you have time for like dating like I don't have time for anything and I'm like so stressed out and I'm also getting my period so that's why I'm all emotional but like am I so dramatic it's fine Welcome to Tugboat Alley, Waterford, New York. A beautiful location where they put on an amazing fireworks display. It's different times of the year. Thought I'd bring you down here and talk a little bit about leadership. So we took a look at that girl there who was a young lady just out of college who finally got into the the old routine of 40 hour work weeks and how time consuming it is to commute there 
to put your time in and then commute back and how much time is wasted in your life and how you don't really have the time to do pretty much anything at all in your personal life, right? All of a sudden you're an adult and adult means responsibilities. She doesn't even have kids yet. So we look at the way the world is set up and who, by the way, came up with the 40 hour work week, five days a week, right? Eight hours a day. We want to take him out back and shoot him. <laughs> so we look at the world now and with technology coming our way, new and more and more new technology um, that's going to certainly change the workforce. We looked at when we went through the pandemic, that changed the workforce for sure. Uh, people working from home became a thing and all that kind of stuff. So things are changing and it's a good time to really evaluate this 40 hours a week going someplace, working your eight hours a day, and then, you know, trying to get your, your life in order from all the chaos that goes on. You know, when we talk about leadership and transformative leadership, this is a time um, with the internet now and the way we have social media set up, the way we can work from our laptop, the way we can be digital creators, we can run businesses through our phone, we can you know, live on an island and still run a, a business. Just amazing things that are going on right now. It's time to really look at this 40 hour work week, five days a week, and start to reevaluate how we do things in this world. Now, it may not work for everybody and every business, but we can certainly look at a lot of businesses right now and, uh, and take a look at how we do things, how we run things. But it all starts with leadership from a grassroots movement. I love this term grassroots because uh, it really can be done from the grassroots at this point with the way we use social media, the way we use the internet. We can really make a big difference, a big impact if we stand together and start to change this world with amazing leadership. Now, leadership doesn't mean you have to be in a position of uh, some kind of high up status in a company or anything like that. You can lead as a janitor. You can lead as a teacher. You can lead as a coach. You can lead as many, many different things, even a family member. You can be a great leader. If you are the father of the family or a mother of the family, you can be a great leader. Leadership, especially transformative leadership, it's just amazing what you can impact people with. But how do we become these amazing leaders? What kind of values do we need to have? How do we speak to people? Well, the, the first thing that in my course, the quantum key, transformative leadership, is the idea that we have to create an environment where people are seen, where people are heard, and people feel safe. Those three things are monumental. When you can get those three things for people, they really can open up their heart and their soul and their inspiration for, the, for your business or whatever you may be running. So we take a look at um, all of these types of things uh, in our own lives and where we can improve things. Are we having conversations, difficult conversations sometimes, with those people in our lives that are important? Are we making them feel heard? Are we making them feel seen? And are we making them feel safe? Can they tell us things without us getting mad, without us reacting in such a negative tone? So we have to look at the way we do business 
and how we can be an amazing leader just by doing those three things. I just did a video on Nelson Mandela and one of the things that uh, I took away from Nelson Mandela is his father was a tribal chief. And the thing that Nelson learned from his father was he observed his father in meetings. And in those meetings, he noticed that everybody s uh, sat in a circle. So everybody was seen, right, in a circle. The other thing that he noticed is his father always waited to speak last. He listened to every single person in that circle that wanted to speak. And not only did he listen, he didn't have an opinion while they were speaking. He waited to the end to hear everybody speak, and then he spoke. That is quite a lot of patience, and it's also an amazing way to make people feel seen, heard, and safe. So let's take those lessons away from that and really implement them into our own personal life. Let's become the tribal chief of our personal life and allow people to be seen, heard, and feel safe. You can check out my transformative leadership course, The Quantum Key, over on risemediatv.com slash business. All right, we are back. And there was a little fun uh, video at the Tugboat Alley over in Waterford, New York, where we've seen many fireworks shows and fun stuff there. Uh, your comments, uh, Leslie, on, um, on what you heard there and anything you took away. I absolutely love to be seen, heard, and what was the third Feel one? Safe. It's like everything. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely everything. I think that's a moving conversation to start with people and leaders you know because at the end of the day if you want retention you want to have roi you want to lead a successful business and make more money like you do need to just learn how to be a transformation leader which means learning how to listen and caring about what matters to other people and uh, being a stand for their happiness and you know work together as a team and Leslie, what did you think about the girl who was very upset at her first job and seeing? Oh gosh, my heart goes out to that girl so much. Uh, I always say to people, I would never want to go back to my twenties. I don't know what age she was, but I feel like twenties were so freaking hard. <laughs> it's like you have absolutely no money yet. You're done with college. You're supposed to have life figured out by now. <laughs> you're like tapping into the job world, and yeah, it, it was not an easy time. Um, and I would like to say to her, just hang in there, girl. It'll get better. <laughs> get help, you know, get support and, um, you know, live your life the way you want to live it because anything is possible. Jared? Well, I loved my 20s. My 30s was a lot of learning. And my beginning of the 40s that I just began is going to be even more amazing than my 20s. But I'll tell you what, my 30s were interesting. But my tw <laughs> my 20s... I didn't go into the typical job market though. Okay. That's the thing too, you know, mm -hmm. just, 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 just spike in memories. But Greg, I love the, um, the foundation, Mr. One, three profile of uh, that to, to see and be heard and feel safe for all of us. And I love the scene and be heard for the projector, the true projector. That sounds great too, being you. And then I love the, uh, the aspect of the Mandela there of uh, his father and listening to the end. And that's typical also of an undefined throat, which is what mm -hmm. you'll love because that's what your design is. Yeah. So I'm just seeing that and I'm seeing authenticity in my lens of seeing that. And uh, I just wanted to state that. So I'm loving that foundation as that emerges for you in the, in the quantum key. And uh, we all need that. Imagine that to be seen for who we are, be allowed to express as who we are, and to feel comfortable, to feel safe, feel secure. These are excellent, excellent things to not only want for ourselves, but to contemplate when we're interacting with other people. 
and giving them that um, ability within themselves and that that foundation to be able to express themselves, be themselves, and feel secure around you, which is what any coach ought to do. It doesn't mean we don't admit some honest truths and uh, do a little spanking every now and then on the old <laughs> ego, because that old ego is quite something, the old victimhood, the old projection, all that kind of stuff. But inevitably, loving and caring is the answer. So good stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I just think it's funny that we have to teach these things uh, because, I mean, my goodness, this should be just typical, you know, human stuff, you know, but it's not. It's it's very difficult uh, right now to navigate um, human relationships and feeling seen and heard and feeling safe, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a tough thing right now in the world. So uh, I just thought it was a really good uh, uh, subject to bring up and uh, to show all those type of things. Um, we're going to spend uh, a couple of minutes just quickly on the Rise Code book. I just wanted to get to uh, – actually, Leslie, we, we talk a lot about villains um, in our book. And whether it's external villains or internal villains, um, we are surrounded by villains. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. It just means we have to observe them and take away the – they could be a catalyst for us. But we have to be observant of them. And so we talked about earth and we talked about in this particular page, um, heaven and hell that can be right where you are standing, but you have to be able to observe it. So let's just take a look quickly at this page here, uh, page uh, 13 of the Rise Code book. And um, it says, it's your choice, heaven or hell. How do you wish to live? Black magic is real. And as much as your light magic is real, the opposite is also true and is being casted at you every day. It is the yin and yang of life. Thankfully, we can counteract this. We can give our attention to or lack of attention to uh, is what our life becomes. The most incredible way of transcending the villain uh, came from the philosophy called the art of war. We give our villains the false sense that they are winning. In doing so, they focus less energy on you and relax. In the meantime, you are building yourself stronger and more focused. Take your power back as you were born to be a sovereign being. To realize who those villains are in your life and to act accordingly will set you free. Um, so pretty big statement there about villains uh, and the idea of we focus our attention a lot of times on the villain and we give that we feed the beast constantly. You see this in narcissist behavior um, where the, um, you know, a person is in a relationship with that and they keep on feeding it over and over and over and will not step away, will not uh, learn a lesson to stop giving energy to them so that they can, you know, want to move on to something else, another host, right? To suck off another host of energy. And there's energy vampires, of course. We've heard them before. There's a lot that goes into it, not just internally, but externally as well. Um, Jaron, you want to add to this? Sure. Well, for me and my foundation, in a foundation here, I always like to express this reminder in one lens of a view of villains is you have your own inner villains, like Greg mentioned. You also have the villains in other people. Then you have the villains of the collective system, the collective ego and its institutions and the way that the herd and society functions. And all these villains are immense opportunities for transformation, transcendence and quantum manifestation. When we can view it from the lens of a reflection and of a new choice. Wisdom, learning, right? Remembrance, really? And then a new choice. I just want to say we have to, what's the most important one though? It isn't the collective villain out there. We blame the world. It isn't the villains and other people. That's all true relatively, but no, it's our own inner villain because the number one villain of all and the key uh, genetic transformation from, if you want to call it 3D to 5D or from the, you know, caterpillar to the butterfly is releasing victimhood. And you had a little quote down there that we mentioned about, you know, they all want you to play the victim. 
and you want you to play the victim when you're in the ego. And it's hard sometimes when life is really challenging. When life is really challenging, it's hard for all of us at sometimes not to be the victim. And we want to blame everything outside of us. And the reality is we have to start inside with self-responsibility. And we have to realize that it's our own creation, co-creation of reality, no matter what we may think. It's not the world that did it to you. It's not the others. You have co-created that reality. And if you trust in life and you at least can at first acknowledge the inside out of what can I do about this situation now, that's important. And the last thing I'll mention is along with this gene 55 that I mentioned, which is the victim to freedom, freedom is the spirit inside, the freedom is inside, that also is the mate of being authentic and transparent, you know, so you do need to execute within the, the field around you. So in other words, if there's villains going on in other people or in the institution itself, let's say the, uh, the patterns, you say no to it. You move away from it. You don't tolerate the negative behavior. You don't tolerate abuse. You don't tolerate projection. You be honest about it. You express yourselves. And at the same time, um, you know, you are willing to communicate what is absolutely true to you, what, what you feel like, how it's making you feel. So we're not denying any of these things. When I say you have to take self-responsibility first, right? We need to communicate authentically with everything that is our mirror, right? And both of these are the mates that are the key to our ascension. The spirit inside is not a victim. And my authentic, complete, transparent, there's your light body, expression, communication, behavior, emanation of my energy is also needed to anything that's going on that is requiring to be transformed. Sometimes both parties or your situation of a job or whatever may transform. It sustains itself. It grows. It goes to the next spiral. Sometimes it must destroy and half of creation is destruction. So sometimes the things end and they must move on through. So when I say approach it, it's not saying it's going to die and it's not saying it's going to live. It's just saying you're you're being authentic and the inside out as you're doing so and accepting reality and accepting what the characters in your movie are also doing as you move through the process of these villains. And then, of course, the herd around you will not like when you're shifting, perhaps. Some may, but some may not. And can you handle the perception of others and the bombardment of things that come at you as you're pursuing your own unique path in a new way? And we must be, as Jedi warriors, we must choose to be ourselves and be okay with everything around us. And remembering someone who may think you're the Christ and the hero, or someone that may think you're the Antichrist, the villain, you see them all neutrally. You don't get swayed in one direction where I'm amazing, I'm the best in an egoic way, or where I'm the worst, I did wrong. We see it all. You just learn to be not neutral in your participation, but neutral in your observation as you make the shifts. So you don't build yourself up a little too much or put yourself down a little too much as your reflections shift around you with their responses. All right. Well, another villain is time. We have come to the end of the episode. So thank you, Leslie, for joining us. Uh, again, go check out her stuff on, YouTube, or on our YouTube link. And uh, you can go over and check out her free book, her Instagram page, and uh, you can get a hold of her for coaching and all that kind of stuff. Leslie, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed Rise TV. Loved being here. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, we will see what the future brings for you and all those around us. But uh, we appreciate you being on with us. And it was an excellent episode. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Rise TV. And we will see you on the next one.